Hey, Scott from MicroWorldThings.com. Here, here once again is in my sister's basement, which explains why, though in this video, we will finally make some sparks with the grinding wheel guard. Uh, we're not going to go crazy. We saw the setup in the last video. If you missed that, be sure to check that out. The video uh, link, as always, will be down in the shop notes. But in this video, I'll show you how to grind and sharpen, at least basically, using your Shopsmith grinding wheel guard. So I have no real scientific evidence to back up what I'm about to tell you. But as I said in the follow-up Q&A uh, for the last video, uh, when this arbor is mounted on your Shopsmith tool, and then you introduce the stone, many of these stones have got these spacers. And there's a little bit of play between each one of these spacers. And it is my thought and observation that when I insert this with it mounted on my Mark V, that there's a little bit of play and I can feel it right now. In fact, let me, let me install this here in the vise so you can see what I'm seeing. So with the arbor now held tightly in place, look at how much I can move that stone. Now the problem is when this is hanging on the end of my quill, if I complete the installation, putting the washer and the tongue washer and the nut on with all of this hanging on the end of the Mark V spindle. I believe that what I've got here now is a stone that is sitting a little further away from the uh, center of the arbor here and a little closer to the center of the arbor here. So I've introduced a little bit of wobble. So it has become my practice to just go ahead and put this in a bench vise. You got a couple flats there on the arbor. And before I'll tighten this up, I'll just kind of sort of center this. Um, is it going to be perfect? I don't know. Probably not. But uh, I think I'm getting it centered better than if I just have it hanging on the end of the quill. At least that's my thinking. Love to get your input on that. Before using the stone now, we want to make sure that it's flat. And in order to flatten it, we typically use a tool called a stone dresser or a dressing tool. Now, if you're not going to use a grinding wheel often, that investment may not be worth it. But the more you grind on these, they'll start to get filled up with debris and then they don't cut quite as well as they should. So from time to time, we'll dress this, this stone up to make sure it's running flat. So because I've never tried them, I went ahead and purchased these little, little diamond um, honing tools. And we're going to see if we can dress this stone up. That'll also indicate for us whether or not this is running true. I'm not sure which of these are the courses. They really, this is interesting, I didn't label them for coarseness. We'll just see how they behave. Wow, that is plenty aggressive. Goodness. Woo. Let's try a final one. My gosh, I can't believe how aggressive these are. <laughs> uh, I do believe, though, we are running true. So I borrowed a chisel from my sister. So this is grinding. Um, I'm, I can remove a, a fair amount of material if I wanted to grind this nose flat. I could go like this. Now I've created truly a dull, and now I have truly a dull chisel at this point. 
but I, at least now we're flat. It was rounded off on the corners before. Go back to our previous angle or close to it. Close enough for what I want to do here. You'll see a shiny line right there. So we are still dull. We haven't got our bevel to meet the back of the chisel yet. That appears to be about, about the correct angle. We'll, we'll see. Let's give this a go. Nope, not the exact angle. So as I was approaching, I was getting sparks before I even, before I was even touching. So I was catching it right here a uh, little, little bit uh, too low an angle right now. We'll go with that. Yeah, now we're out by a tip. And here's where we could use a container of water to make sure we're quenching this so that we're not overheating it. While this is cooling down a bit, there's a lot of discussion about whether we should grind against the side of the stone. And, and, and really safe practice says, no, you should not. Um, if, you, if you wanted to, let's say, grind a notch into this, instead of grinding in from the side, you would grind in from the front, achieving the same results. However, when you got to the very bottom, you might want to give it a little bit of a kiss on the side of the stone. So I would say I'm, I'm okay with the side of the stone here for, for maybe for honing, just a slight kiss, but I don't grind against the side of the stone. See if we've cooled down. Yes, we have. We'll grind a little more. And you can see that I'm getting sparks dancing across the front of this, which uh, tells me we're making great contact with the tip. If this were already sharp and all I was wanting to do was to hone this and create a little bit of a micro bevel, uh, we would be doing great right now. I truly am changing the angle of this if I continue on. Now, if you happen to own either version of the Mark 7, the same trick can be accomplished from the front side of the machine but with the machine running in reverse, in which case the wheel will be run in this direction. Now with a rubber bonded abrasive wheel uh, or Kratex wheel, this is a great place to maybe do a little quick touch up right on the side of the stone. Just be aware, we're talking like a bench chisel that's got some beveled corners. Uh, it's real easy to get sucked in right alongside of the tool rest. So uh, be sure that your tool rest is back. And I would only recommend that this be done when you're, um, get my tool rest in the position I like, that's about good right there. Um, also only do this while the stone is, is moving away from you. And we're just gonna give this a quick kiss, just like so.
definitely need to continue polishing here. That indicated we've got a little bit of a, of a, a dent here. Corners absolutely have been bent. We'll have to go back, go a little deeper, especially here at the cutting edge, if we expect the cutting edge to be straight. Closer to our goal. Not too bad for a piece of junk. So I have one more thing to show you on the grinding wheel guard, and that is if you happen to have the accessory kit, it's possible to sharpen joiner and planer knives on it. Now I've gone on record as saying I prefer this jig with the conical sander for sharpening joiner and planer knives. You get much better control and you get an excellent result. I get just the opposite with the the little jig or attachment for the grinding wheel guard. But I'll show you how it works. And if you happen to have it, if it's your only method of sharpening your joiner or planter knives, you can get by. Um, let me just show you how it works. This is everything that is included if you happen to have the accessory kit for doing joiner and planter knives. You can see it's pretty straightforward, just a couple pieces of steel, one that has holes and one that has slots. And the way these are designed to be used, here on our tool rest, we have threaded holes. And so we can align this and run screws through, holding that in place. This acts then as a fence that allows us to slide the blade closer to or further away from the blade. We also have these little cap screws or machine head cap screws and washers. It's important to have the smooth side down with these. We don't want it to dig in. You might think that digging in the washers would uh, give you a better hold, but it turns out it, it gives you a false sense that everything is nice and tight, and then it can slip on you. So we'll insert those. And then with our, with our knife, we'll put the knife up here and we're going to adjust the angle. And what is the appropriate angle? Well, this is where having an angle gauge sure would come in handy because you could adjust the tool rest before you ever install the jig. Slide all these parts into position. And I'm just gonna pantomime this because I'm not gonna ruin my sharp joiner knife. All right, now this uses our standard Shopsmith toolbox, 532nd hex wrench. And we would slide this up to where that blade is making contact with the stone and then tighten the cap screw. And it's wanting to shift on me as I tighten. And the tool rest just moved. Let's adjust that tool rest back slightly. There we go. Now the way we would use this is you would set your knife here and drop it into place as it's running. And then you're gonna slide this from left to right. What you're looking for are sparks across the entire face of the stone. If you're not getting them across the entire face, you can adjust your, uh, your fence here 
to make it uh, to make it uh, give you a straight. If you're not getting sparks all the way across the stone, you'll need to adjust this fence portion to make sure that everything is running parallel across the face. Um, now you can see with this four inch joiner knife, I don't have support for this entire knife. Um, uh, even at four inches, it's, it's already hanging off. So you can imagine where this thing would be if I had a 12 inch knife on here. I find it it's just way too easy to get misaligned as I do this. And uh, again, how do we get this to take a little more off? Well, the best way is to move the fence forward ever so slightly. How do we do that? Um, I find inaccurately, but I will leave one of those tight and rotate the other one up. I felt it move just slightly under the side. And then if if I've just moved this edge a little bit closer, I'd make sure that I enter from this direction. And that's how you do it. Oh boy, I just don't like this. But the best place for this is back in the box.